You are listening to season four of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I'm Kimberly Evans, and I'm so happy you are here. After planning events and working in the marketing industry with so many incredible clients and entrepreneurs for almost 20 years, along with personally experiencing hardship in life and business, I've discovered how powerful our mindset and purpose is in creating a life of joy and celebration while having a whole lot of fun along the way. Join me with a coffee or cocktail as I connect with inspiring leaders, entrepreneurs, tastemakers, and extraordinary people as they share their journey in life and business and how they are striving to live a life of purpose. Your fears and beliefs in yourself will be transformed as you work towards creating the best version of yourself from the inside out. You're in good company. Cheers to celebrating simple life. Today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, I'm chatting with artist Denise Klett. Denise's earliest memory of creating was when she was four and spent hours copying the drawings out of her sister's How to Draw book, which serendipitously was written by a Disney artist. By the age of eight, she informed her parents that she wanted to quit school to become a full-time artist. When that was discouraged, by grade five, she was selling her line drawings to buy treats, and by the age of 16, she had her first cartoon strip published in two local newspapers. 45 years later, she has still never wavered in this career choice. With a background in murals, children's portraits, and eventually co-creating the Belly Button Buddies series, she very quickly became known as the artist who could capture joy in children. Through the diagnosis of her mom's cancer and an unfortunate thumb accident, Denise was reminded of the fragility of life and took a break from painting during this time. On her return with a fresh perspective, she created two heartfelt collections to capture life's simple and beautiful moments. Continuing to work hard, putting herself out there and showing up even when it was hard, in 2019 her magical dream came true when she was signed as the very first Canadian to be a Disney fine art artist with Collector's Edition. Tune in to hear her inspiring story of perseverance, finding your sparkle, and what creating as a Disney fine art artist looks like. You can even jump over to Instagram and stay connected and make sure to tag Celebrating Simple Life on your Instagram stories when you share your favorite parts of this episode. Hello, Denise. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. I am so excited. As we were discussing before we pressed record here today, it's been a year since I've seen you in real actual life. I know. In a way, it's gone fast. In another way, every day has just dragged. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? There's like no, there's this. I was talking with a few friends about this last week. It doesn't feel like there's any middle ground or gray area. It's like everything either feels like a million years ago or like time is moving so slow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it, I can't think too far into the future about how things are going to be better. I just have made up my mind every day is just another day I work or, you know, have to do my thing. But yeah, I agree with you. That's a smart way to look at it. I know I go through like roller coaster phases of that where I'm really good at staying present. And then I have like a few weeks where I'm like, this past week was one of them. I'm like, oh, everything feels like too much. And I could tell that it was like forward thinking too much and then getting in my head. And then everything feels overwhelming rather than just focusing on just today, right now, take a deep breath. We're going to be okay. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, trust me, I've had meltdown days where I'm just a puddle on the ground, but you know, I try to scoop myself up and carry on. We could have a whole episode just about all the meltdowns we've had in the last I think every woman could, yeah, every person, not just a woman, every person could, yeah, it could go on for days. (laughs) Well, let's talk about happy things. Yeah, we are going to talk about very happy things today because I could just, I have been so anticipating this conversation and I was hoping it would be in person, but here we are chatting virtually, which is second best. And I am just so excited for you to share your story with my listeners today, because for those of you who have not yet followed Denise Klett on Instagram or social or seen her real life work from her amazing career that she's had in art. I just cannot wait for you to share this story today because you time and time again, this past year, when I was thinking about things that were 
blessings that have happened in the last few years of my life. I kept thinking about you and kept thinking about how we by chance met. And I, I did not connect the dots that you knew people that, that I knew your daughter from before. And I didn't know that you were her mom and randomly stumbled into your cute little gallery that you used to have and was in there for a client purposes and then met you and was like, whoa, who is this <laughs> amazing person? And now we've gotten to stay connected from that. And I don't believe in accidents, but it was a coincidence meeting. And I'm so grateful that it happened. <laughs> so am I. Amen to everything you said. <laughs> Yay. So before we dive into the juicy part that I cannot wait to talk about, I want to hear your, your background and I want you to share where you've come from in your career and how you got started as an artist. Okay, so I started, I've been a full-time artist making a living for 38 and a half years. So it's hard to encapsulate that into, you know, <laughs> a half hour or whatever. You may need a whole series, a whole series. Yeah, hmm. but you know, I do remember the moment um, where I knew I was going to be an artist and I was actually in grade four. Um, the teacher had asked us to do drawings and I did a drawing and she came over and she grabbed the, the, the piece of paper that I was doodling on. I wasn't doodling. I drew a, a face <laughs> and she just looked at me. She goes, wow. And then she walked out, went to go the other teacher and brought her back and showed her my art. And she goes, so do you think she's going to be a little artist? And I just looked up at her and I'm like, uh-huh. And then I remember going home. Now, this is, this is my personality. I went home, got my mom and dad seated at a chair in the living room, and I had a meeting with them. And I told them that I could quit school. They could put me in art school because school was to um, prepare you for what you're going to be when you grew up. And I knew I was going to be an artist and they, that they should put me in art school and I would be retired by 20 at eight. <laughs> Just, you know, a, just a enough. sassy little firecracker from a young age. <laughs> yeah. So my dad was like, well, that's a really good idea. I'm glad you want to be an artist. And thankfully, they never discouraged that idea. They didn't ever make it sound like a negative choice for a career to be. Um, thankfully, because, you know, that can get knocked out of yeah. you pretty fast. Totally. And then, you know, I was making a living by grade five <laughs> because... <laughs> I would do doodle. This is true. I would draw, I would charge other kids for my drawings. And then I would have money to go buy butter, tart, butter tarts and chocolate donuts and whatever I needed. And it was usually guys getting me to draw like love pictures for the girls that they like. I have never yeah. in my life heard somebody do this. This is the best thing that I've heard. <laughs> And I'm imagining my children would... doing this because my daughter is in grade four and I'm imagining her pulling us aside and being like, listen here, I can see <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> and it was all serious. I mean, I dressed up in a little dress and the whole thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So by the time, so I had, you know, probably by the time I was 10, 12, I realized that you could make money. I was, I'm, I'm think I'm more of an entrepreneur that leans, that is blessed with having, you know, art skills. Right. right? So I was that always, doesn't always go how... hand in hand with the artists. No, you're like too not. creative. You have too much going on in your head. It's like, that's the why you get to be so talented and good at it. Yeah. No, my business side is as strong as my art, art side, thankfully, because it, it is hard to make a living as an artist unless you have a patron that loves you. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but you know, by the time I was 16, I had a published um, cartoon strip in three different newspapers in Saskatchewan. Um, and then, you know, I was like, oh, I could take this and I can license it out. And I could, you know, again, be retired by the time I was 20. So I, I don't know. I always wanted to be retired early and I am not. Yes. So <laughs> thankfully. Um, yeah no thankfully so um by the time yeah by the time I was done high school I, I knew that this is what I wanted to do but I really didn't have direction um I got married early and then had babies early 
So you've met my one daughter. So we had two girls. Yeah. I was a mama by the time I was 20. So um, we moved to Toronto um, because of my husband's work and quickly realized that I needed to work. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> so get this, this is my, I went and applied at a bank. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, um, my two week career at a bank um, was not the best choice. And then I have always just been, just do it type of person. So I saw a sign in an in a, a interior design center that wanted an artist to come and do murals. Now this is back in the eighties. So murals and faux finishing and all that was really big. And I went in and applied. So I would be about 22 years old. And I said, sure, I can paint murals. I will, you know, paint whatever you need. And the girl was young, so she never asked for a portfolio, which is a good thing because I didn't have anything. And she gave me the job to paint a whole bunch of murals in um, a show home. Wow. And then I, yeah, well, except I needed to go. I actually knew a, an artist that taught color theory. So I phoned her and I said, do you think in two weeks you can teach me how to paint? <laughs> My comic, strip back, my comic strip background is suddenly not serving. Yeah, it's only me. black and white. <laughs> so she just looked at me. She, we met for coffee and she looked at me and she goes, so do you, you know, where are you at painting? And I said, I don't know. I have never painted. I've only painted two things in high school, Yoda and a geometrical black and white design. So, <laughs> so she just looked at me like, oh my God. So thankfully, we actually really um, became good friends. and she said that she would come and help me and we worked together for five years. So she was a color theorist, um, taught color theory at the university and she became my mentor. And I wouldn't be where I am now without her color knowledge that I absorbed from her working every day for five years. Yeah. Wow. And that, I mean, I could, there, we had so many adventures together we were in magazines and television shows. And yeah, we did really well there. Yeah. That is incredible. Meanwhile, you have these two young, young little people at home that you're raising and doing all the things. And I think that is so inspiring because I know that a lot of women listening to this right now, this is a huge struggle for us as we're trying to grow our businesses, we're trying to raise our kids, we're trying to do all the things. And it just feels sometimes like there's so many decisions that have to be made in that. Like, how do you possibly do both? How do you do both successfully? How do you continue to grow your business and kids? And here you are living proof. You have two, I've met both of your daughters and they are both just lovely humans. <laughs> You did good, mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I mean, truth be told, I made decisions that I, you know, you wish you hadn't of. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, of course, I mean, it is so hard. There is no right. There's no wrong. You have to try to balance out each day. And, you know, I was a very young mom. So, you know, if I would, had been in my 30s, maybe I would have done things different. But you know what? The girls grew up in a creative home. Um with a ton of love so yeah I'm sure that you know at, <laughs> Bonnie that 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 was the teacher that my business partner she thankfully had a daughter that was 12 and she loved babysitting so if we were mm -hmm. gone on the job they would be together um and they had fun like kids are so resilient too oh, right and God, totally you have to work you have to work and I I did and thankfully I got to do um, projects that I, I loved and was skilled that fast. I'm a very fast learner and I also have um, a guttural instinct on, on just on art. Like I, I actually see 3D when I'm painting. So I learn really fast. Thankfully I do. I, I learned very fast. What a gift. And it, yeah. <laughs> I can't cook with darn though. <laughs> hey, if you were a good cook too, then I would just have to be mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like cleaning. So there you go. <laughs> you, you can't win them all. You know what? I, I take the gift that you had for sure over being good at those other two things. <laughs> so, so 
like, how did you move forward then from here? Like you're painting these murals, you're just somehow getting dropped into this cool situation that you like didn't even feel qualified for yet you were ready to just jump to the challenge and it turned out to be this awesome experience. Um, well, okay, so we lasted five years in Toronto. Um, I desperately missed family and the roots. You know, you can, that old saying, you can take a girl out no, what's the thing? <laughs> you know, you can, whatever it is. You yeah. know, I, I had to come back to my roots. Had to come and home. Come home, and I really miss my my mom, especially. Um, there's that relationship you have with grandma and mom and the girls. And we moved back home, and you know, I was exhausted. I didn't realize how tired I was, and I took six months off of even creating, and we just kind of settled in. We actually lived with my mom and dad. Um, for five years, we made um, a suite in their home and it was glorious before we actually moved into our own home. And when I came home, I took off six months and then really kind of thought about what I wanted to do. And the city of Saskatoon and the Broadway Bid Association um, put a call out for murals and they actually phoned me. Some, somehow, one of them knew that I used to do that in Toronto. And that's where the, the mural with all the kids' faces yes. Um, that was one of the very first projects I did when we came back to Saskatoon and that was 27 years ago. And it's like still such an iconic feature piece of Broadway. Yeah and those have both of our girls faces on it and they're all real kids from the neighborhood so yeah I mean I know it's scheduled probably the new building is going to go up there but murals have a life and they come and they go and they're part of a celebration. And I'm, I'm totally okay that, you know, one day it might not be there. It's a part of my history, but do you know, after that mural, I got a lot of calls from people asking if I wanted to do portraits. Oh. Um, and, and I did a few corporate portraits and I didn't really enjoy that because everybody doesn't want to, um, you know, know what they look like, or oh, especially women, they're like, the rose, make me a little the rose younger, colored little glasses. Thinner. Yeah. <laughs> and what happened, to, I really leaned into just doing children. And that was glorious, because kids just are joyous to paint. Mm-hmm. I did that for 15 years. Um, so it was the best. It was incredible training that um, I'm so glad I have, especially for what I'm doing now. And then besides doing portraits, I kind of also really still wanted to do like paintings of my own kind, like you might like whimsical. I have always leaned towards whimsical art, bright colors, stuff that is joyous. And um, I started doing a little series called The Belly Button Buddies. And from there I met an amazing writer, performer, and we spent 10 years together producing three different, um, two different children's books and uh, three different CDs and 100,000 kids to all the performances and my art. And it even got recorded as a television show that um, aired in Canada and the UK. So um, after that, I had um, kind of a, a art line that developed because of my mom having breast cancer and it was to celebrate the, the joy of being any shape and any size as a woman. And I called it the girl. And that was very successful too. It brought a lot of joy and giggles and a um, whole bunch of art shows where a lot of women got together and giggled because I based the names of the paintings off all the names that we call our boobs. So oh my word, that is the <laughs> best. <laughs> and you would not believe how many nicknames we have. <laughs> when you get those women together, it all starts yep. coming out. Yep. Um, it actually happened because me and Chelsea and Rochelle, like my daughter, we were sitting having wine one night and we started talking about all the names that we have for our babe. Just a casual Friday and, night at the club. Yeah, <laughs> And of course, the subject went to self-esteem and especially, you know, about 15, 20 years ago, self-esteem was just really starting to be talked about with women and that we needed to celebrate who we are and, and what this vessel that we have 
has done for us mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have to be perfect. So I, I sketched out some drawings and then we started making a list of everything. And shortly after that, I noticed my husband has, had disappeared <laughs> and he went into the garage and didn't come out for quite a while. <laughs> But that line of art did really well. It, it really, um, it was healing for me. It was healing for lots of women just to celebrate who we are. And it was bright and colorful. Oh my goodness. That is incredible. I did not know this story and I am so happy that you shared this. I just, as soon as I walked into your, the gallery that you used to have for the first time and just saw the, I know you carried other artists pieces in there as well, but the ones that just jumped out to me were these bright, whimsical, I am so drawn to that too, with it just being the colors. And there was just something about it that you just like, couldn't look away from. It's just, you just have this captivating way of capturing things. And I am definitely sharing all of these links in the show notes, because if you haven't had a chance to look and it's better in person, but if for right now, looking online is the only way to see it, clicking through and looking at some of your work, like it's just, my mind is just blown at the creativity that comes out of your mind. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> well, you know, I have a lot of styles and as an artist, I do get bored. I get bored mm -hmm. of if I have to do repetitive over and over and hats off to any artist that does the same work um, all the time, but I get really bored of it. So, um, and I'd also, the girls art was really, really great, um, but going, developing it and going through it with my mom having breast cancer. Now she is a survivor, thank goodness, but it kind of, it kind of, um, I had to put it aside and stop and just um, decide exactly what I wanted to do. And also during when my mom had her breast cancer and the surgeries and everything, I also, we were also in the middle of building our home. And um, we were, I was very tired one day and I was helping lay the wood floor and um, had an accident and I actually severed off my thumb on my left hand, I am right-handed. So that kind of stopped and it made me really realize that time and unforeseen circumstances and accidents can really change how you view life. And from that moment, I kind of stopped creating again. I, I, I wasn't able to go into my studio for about eight months. Wow. And yeah, and I was like, I didn't know why. And I think it was just, I needed to heal. I needed to pause because it was very hectic. I was always on the go. One year I did over 20 different art shows across Canada. So it would go, 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 go. And this put a big break on me. And I sat down and I remember being in my studio. I grabbed a canvas. Nobody was home. Everybody was gone. And I don't remember why, but I grabbed a canvas. It was early in the morning and I didn't stop painting until it was dark. It was probably 10 or 11 at night. And I, I did my first whimsical painting that was just me. And it was just kids in Hawaii with a surfboard and all that. And that's when I realized that I needed just to do exactly what I wanted to do. And that changed my whole career. So that's when I really started painting what I loved and it was children and moments in our life that were just just that moment maybe at the beach but it brought joy and when I started doing art shows with those that's when people were coming up to me and going I'm buying one of your paintings because that reminded me of being 10 or that reminded me of my childhood or that reminded me of a that's how I wish my childhood had been you know and I shared a lot of tears of joy and hugs and that's when I knew I was on my third correct path. I could not love that more. I just a little bit ago did a podcast episode about what did you wish for when you were 13? Because my daughter turned 13 recently and it was giving me all the feels of thinking back to me being a teenager and thinking about exactly what you're talking about, about just I think it's so easy, no matter what stage of life we're in, that we just like lose and 
especially right now as we're all just like clawing at the walls, wanting to like get out of here and travel and be able to just, I don't know, I don't like the word normal, but just some semblance of normalcy that we remember from before. It has made me reflect a lot on what made, what used to make me happy. What was I happy doing when I was 10, 15, Mm -hmm. 20, 25, you know, like what were the things that like sparked joy? And I think it's so easy to let all the things in the world sort of glaze that over until all of a sudden you wake up one day and just don't see the same you that you want to be putting out into the world. I'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to let you in on something really special. Just like you, I value my health and am so grateful for the team at Holistic Physiotherapy and Wellness right here in Saskatoon. Not only do they have an incredible clinic, but also offer telehealth virtual appointment options for anyone across Saskatchewan. I have had virtual physio and naturopathic appointments in these last few months, and they have been game changers for me, all from the comfort of my own home. And right now they are offering 10% off off any Pilates package and subscription in person and online with unlimited use from right now in January until the end of March. And as a listener of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, you can also receive $10 off any of their core health services in person or virtual telehealth. They have naturopathic medicine, chiropractic, physiotherapy, pelvic floor physiotherapy, massage therapy, yoga therapy. Book online today at holisticphysiowellness.ca and and use the code CELEBRATE10, or you can call the clinic at 306-373-0060 because this is your year to take care of you and feel your best. Exactly. Yeah. And that when I was loving doing what I was doing in grade five, or even when I was 16, it was always to do with cartoons, Hmm. always to do with a simple line or humor I always humor gets you through life too so when I started painting what I loved things started to fall more into place um it was it's still hard making a living in Saskatchewan as an artist is not the easiest thing um there's not a lot of exposure here but you know I started licensing I started deciding that I was going to license my artwork um so i began going to the licensing shows and the bigger shows like in New York and Los Los Angeles um, and showing off my art and the response was good and slowly um, I started to you know meet pretty cool people I had an agent who a really unique agent he was the licensing agent of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles He, he developed he developed he didn't make he wasn't the artist but he was the agent that helped develop that into a one point I think it was a 3.2 billion dollar business or something like that you'd have to check um but it's in the billions anyway so I got to know him um he was the one that got me a licensing deal for Macmillan Publishing for coloring books um my my art on fabric beach bags whole bunch of things so that was interesting and then um, this creative, creative Sask, thankfully, has had amazing grants. And I spent the time and applied for different grants. And that opened up a whole new world because I was able to go down to the um, New York Art Expo. I was able to go to the Florida Art Bazaar. And that's where my whole life changed. And here we are, the pivotal question (laughs) that I've been waiting to ask you. Just so that time when Disney called, like, la, 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 (laughs) like, you need to dive into this because I have shared, like, there's just something about knowing your story and knowing your background and, and how hard you've worked and all of the things you've sacrificed along the way to be an artist here in Saskatchewan, like you said, where this is not for the weak of heart. <laughs> this no, no, here. it's not. <laughs> you have pushed every ounce of your way to getting where you are today. And I'm, I'm guessing that in your wildest dreams, where you are right now, if someone had told you that this was going to happen, even a few years ago, you'd been like, um, 
that would be great, but like, is this happening? And then here it is. I, my mind just blows about this because I feel like there's this, um, there's a thought process. I think that we start in business, you work your way through business and whether it's going really successfully or it's pushing all the way through business is hard. It is hard yeah. owning your own business and, um, trying to essentially sell yourself and the things that you create or the products you create and the services you offer and all the things in between that is hard. And it takes a lot of courage and thick skin and all the things and for you to get where you are today and then to have this magical door (laughs) (laughs) open, not because it came by accident, but because you have worked your tail off to get here. I just like, my heart is like beating out of my chest for you. Just imagining like how unbelievable this must've felt. So you need to give us the background on this story. Cause everyone listening is like, what's the magical moment? What happened? What, what, happened? what are you ready to share? <laughs> okay. So when I was down in Florida, I met a, another Canadian artist. And of course, because you see a Canadian flag, you're like, ah, oh, you're an artist that's from Canada. And we bonded really fast and she's a sculptor and I'm a painter and she wanted to do painting and I want to do sculpting so we met up at Saskatchewan they live in an RV and she came up here and she helped me do my very first bronze um she didn't help me sculpt it but she helped me with the logistics of how to do an armature and that so three months later um it was down in in Texas and she picked it up and she says do you mind if I show it to the Wyland Gallery in Florida now I didn't realize she meant in Disney World but so she did, and the owner, the owner loved it, and he he's like, sure, I'll show it. And I still didn't realize that they were in Disney World um, in Boardwalk by Epcot. So um, he, the Fine Art Festival at Epcot was just happening, and um, he phoned and he says, okay, I'm going to show it at the Fine Art Festival at Epcot, and we'll see where that goes. And they had some good interest in it, but I only had one piece, right? But he had no idea my background of my art, my, my huge portfolio. He, he didn't know anything about me, except he liked this bronze that had a bear on it and birds. <laughs> so um, I decided, heck, I'm, let's fly down there and meet him so that he understands who I am. And, you know, one-on-one is way more important than a phone call. Yes. So we went down there in January of that year and um, met with him. And and I was so nervous because it was like, okay, this is bigger than I thought it was because not even thinking, you know, Disney or anything, this is, this is in Disney. So the exposure for my art is going to be really great. And they were sitting in his office and I said to him, so there's all this Disney art. How do I be, you know, how do I get to do this? And he says, well, you're going to have to come up with something really unique because there is hundreds of people, of artists who would love to be a Disney artist, Disney fine artist. And I just went, oh, okay. So me and my husband went to Magic Kingdom that day and about two hours in, I just looked at him and I said, okay, I know what I'm going to do. And he just smiled at me and he says, of course you do. (laughs) And, And then we enjoyed the rest of the day. So little remind me to tell you a little back history from 10 years ago that links this all together so I went home and I promptly practiced a little bit of sculpting on uh, metal and uh, sculpting on some canvas board and realized that I could sculpt and paint so let's picture a flower and then maybe I sculpted that out and I painted it and there's you know, sunshine around it type of thing. Like it's part painting, part sculptural. Yes. And nobody has done that. So I did Tinkerbell and that is on my website. You can see the actual Tinkerbell there. I did Tinkerbell. I sculpted her. I, I did sculpted flowers all around. There's Swarovski crystals in it and it was really pretty. And I wrapped it up with a whole bunch of love and I sent it to the gallery. Now he delayed on showing it because they're in the middle of the festival. So we didn't send it down to Disney Fine Art um, in California for them to see until April. 
So it was April 27th that he phoned me and he says, Collector's Edition by Disney Fine Art, of Disney Fine Arts loves your work. Would you be like, would you um, like to produce some more and see if you can get licensed? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just <laughs> give you a hard yes on that. <laughs> yeah. So I produced um, a Moana painting and a Lion King painting and we shipped it down to them. Didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything. And then um, exactly six months to the hour, um, he phoned me November 27th and said at 8.04 in the morning, <laughs> he says, so Disney is going to sign you. So I want to make, okay, I have to make this clear. So Collector's Edition owns Disney Fine Art. And they're the only licensee company for the Disney, Walt Disney Company, like world. So they're not, this is not Disney, but this is um, Collector's Edition, who is the only company in the world that have the right to have artists paint Disney works, Disney paintings, and then they can sell them in the different galleries. I still had to be approved by Disney. Every single piece that I, that I um, come up with concept, from concept to finish, is approved by the Disney Animation Studios and the licensing department. So even though I don't work for Disney, it's still, um, it's approved by them. So I'm, I, I'm considered a licensed Disney Fine Art by Collector's Edition is my title. <laughs> so to confuse you. <laughs> Just to confuse you, right? No, that's not confusing. That totally makes sense. So what on earth is going on in your head on November 27th when you received this phone call, knowing that you had essentially manifested this and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You're like in the mm -hmm. happiest place on earth months back, <laughs> you're yeah. figuring out these ideas of how you can be unique in an industry that is so creative. And Disney is like always on the forefront of starting creative trend mm. for people to follow and you're like oh sure I can do this no big deal I challenge accepted <laughs> I try not to think of that part <laughs> um well when I got the phone call I remember just kind of sitting there and taking it all in I didn't cry I didn't anything I was like oh phew okay this is real um for the whole six months I kid you not I played Disney music when I was painting I watched Disney movies I just kept thinking this is going to be great I would put on my Disney ears like just as you said manifesting it it was that was all I thought about because I knew it would be career changing so to put it in perspective I'm the first Canadian ever to be signed as a licensed Disney fine artist I'm the seventh woman um in, with collector's edition and there's only 31 active artists in the world oh my word Denise like Canadian first first Canadian first female Canadian and uh, this is this is like the type of thing that I would have only imagine your grade your grade <laughs> four self <laughs> in the middle of your parents' business meeting would have been saying to them, hey guys, just so you know, um, I'm going to be working for uh, Disney's fine art department someday. And your parents being like, oh, we're so proud of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, you have, I don't work for Disney fine, like Disney art Sorry, department. Sorry, for it's collector's not, edition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they just want to make sure that people understand that. I will link collector's um, edition in the show notes so that everyone can see where this like comes from. But like, yes. this is, and yay, I'm on their website. <laughs> yeah, perfect. We will find you on their website. So yes. tell me a little bit about, so you were fortunate enough recently, which obviously a world pandemic really knows how to slam someone's dreams right in the face when you're ready to oh, launch it? big things. <laughs> <laughs> like that time when I get to start making Disney art and suddenly a pandemic hits. <laughs> yeah. So my very, so I signed um, December 5th, serendipitously, serendipitously, um, Walt Disney's birthday. So that was kind of, that was just kind of cool. cool. Just, you know, yeah. So that was 2019. 
So I had three months to get ready for my first solo show, March 19th, 2020, with the J Disney World closed. So my solo show was that week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, the whole world shut down. It wasn't just me. So you know what? It's one of those things. I have had this conversation with so many people. And it's one of those things where, yes, it's an ironic situation that everybody was in it at the same time. And like, there's no really woe is me about a situation when the whole entire world shuts down, right? It's not like you'd be like, oh, yeah. but I had this going on. However, I don't think that negates the fact that everybody is allowed to feel their own set of emotions and sadness about their own situation oh, because it still just sucks, you know? It totally sucked. And I did have, I did have complete meltdown. Well, I think you're in shock too, but yeah. I had a total meltdown of, of it all um, because it's like, now what? You know, because really this was, the pinnacle of my art career it still is it's not yeah. was it it still is um the gallery so the wild and gallery at boardwalk I mean they had to close every everything closed and they had you know their sales consultants there are consultants that were you know they don't have a job anymore and thankfully what they've done is they did a whole bunch of um zoom Zoom meetings so that people could come into our studios and watch us paint and they could sell art. And thankfully, they've been selling art all through this. Um, I had quite a few commissions before the pandemic hit. So I was able to at least know, know that was on the board and that would give me work. And, and then I also um, spent a lot of time with a brilliant young guy and we built my website during the pandemic pandemic and it's you know I, I I had time to get that all up and running and it's That's beautiful been it's beautiful Thank too you. such a nice refresh yeah yeah and you know what it also allowed me to pause and you know you it made everybody slow down right so mm -hmm. the one thing that I I had people say to me well you're used to just being in your studio by yourself painting all day so it doesn't really affect you and which is not true. I, every artist that I knew really struggled to go into their studio, especially when it first started and create the energy in the world was off. Mm -hmm. There was panic, uncertainty. It's hard to create when you're in, uh, you're a creative person. It's yep. hard to create when there's yep. that kind of atmosphere. So I did not create much in the first five, six months of 20 like after March, it yeah. was really hard to go in. I would just go do dishes or laundry. <laughs> I, so. I hear you loud and clear on that. And I found almost like this sense sometimes where I had to really do a lot of internal work about this, but I really found like, even just from a posting things on social about parties and about joy and fun times and things that felt good to me and things that are still a big part of my life. I struggled to put that stuff out there when the pandemic hit, because that is not what anybody was feeling. And I almost felt like it was like putting salt in the wound sometimes or something of like yeah. talking about yeah. good things, even though life felt so hard. And it was this it still is a little bit. Sometimes there's like days where it feels easier than others. And we're all kind of in a different space now than we were, um, when everything hit, but still there's a lot of uncertainty and that still feels kind of interesting some days. Celebrating Simple Life is proud to be a member of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which is supported by Direct West. Is marketing getting in the way of running your business? Things like updating your Google listing, thinking of a headline for a billboard, or making sure your website is in good shape? That's where Direct West comes in. You can get local expert marketing help for your business at directwest.com. Yeah, we need that though. We, we do. And that. that is exactly we what do. a lot of people told me exactly that where I was like thinking yeah. of it the wrong way. Like we do need, and we need to t be able to take turns. I have weeks where I don't feel like I can put anything out. And then I see something that somebody else has been able to put out and be like, okay, yes, I can do this. And you like need to take your turn to help yeah. keep people up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm putting stuff out about a mouse. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, no, but so, I mean, from September kind of on, I've been more productive. And then I knew that the, the Epcot Fine Art Festival, Festival of the Arts is what it's called, is, was coming up in January. And oh man, it was so hit and miss because um, the gallery had a big show in November and they wanted me to come down. And I was just like, man, I like, I just don't, I don't think I can travel. I don't think we knew enough either about yeah. everything. Yeah. And, you know, you get paranoid. So I didn't go down for the big show, but thankfully um, I had enough pieces. They sold all the artwork that I sent down there and collectors started finding out who I was and my art and also the artists, the other artists. I have never met any of them yet. Totally. Um, yeah, so, and it's a very small, cool little group of people. And th so they got introduced to my work. And then the gallery owner asked me if I would come for the Disney festival at Epcot. Now it's their fifth year. And it was, it was, it was, it was a tough decision because if I didn't, if I wasn't there, they wouldn't show my work because it's an event. So the event is meeting the artist, not just seeing their art. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so boy that was a roller coaster ride so we finally decided that I was going to go and then I was just going to go for like get there Wednesday and come home Monday but then WestJet flights all were starting to shift because of all the changing laws yeah. and it became only flying on Saturday so then it was sort of like okay well I'm going to go two weeks and I said well I ain't going by myself so my husband came and we you know thankfully we did go because um, I found traveling okay. Like the, the airlines were great to work with. I didn't feel unsafe at all. I mean, we all we wore, you know, our masks and everything. Yeah. We got down to Florida and everybody there, like in Orlando, everybody, everybody is wearing masks. It's no different than here. Yeah. Um, and Disney is super safe, like social distancing and masks and everything and it's limited capacity. I felt safer than I do in Costco type of thing well I can only so. imagine with how like amazing they are with like just the park cleanliness and just the Disney way on everything that they do would of course yes. get translated into how they're managing a pandemic right yep and they have to they you know this is their industry so even with 35 percent capacity at the show it was still really busy um all of my artwork all my original sold um I had my non-Disney work there too which is really cool because it introduces, you know, my other style of yeah. art and that did well. And um, it was a busy 12 days. And then Canada said, oh, you better get home because we're going to change the laws again. <laughs> now <laughs> or we never. Were, <laughs> yeah. And we, we weren't sure what to do. So um, the minister of travel had said, or transport had said, they might make it so they have to stay in the hotel for the, you know, the $2,000 bill hotel. Yeah. And that's that Thursday. And we're like, okay, we are supposed to come home that Saturday. And we just decided to come home Wednesday, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. I mean, I, we came home early just for ease of mind. And um, I, I am so thankful we went because it's, how I make a living right my husband is my manager and looks after everything and it it was worth it because I got commissions it was good for my soul for sure oh. for the creative side oh, yeah I and imagine pinch me but I was showing my art it in Disney World like, with what 30 other artists that's it yeah no kidding like I I can't imagine how much of an out-of-body experience that must have felt like just uh, I mean, you were a lover of things Disney prior to being mm -hmm. kind of an artist. So, but just being there and we, our family was at Disney World the week before the pandemic hit in 2020. Um, right. And got back into Canada on the 6th of March. And so it was like the following week that everything shut down in Saskatchewan, at least. Um, and so yeah. while you were there just now, because we had 
we had been to Disneyland a couple times. We had never been to World Disney World, and so I could like visualize where you were, <laughs> and you're like doing cool updates on your Instagram. And I was like, I feel like I'm on a Disney vacation following <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you know, and it was so it was so fascinating because um, we had we had to go through the backstage. We had to go through the, where the cast members you know, sign in for the day. And um, I, I did post a couple of pictures on Instagram and then took them down because I didn't realize I was not supposed to do that. Um, but you kind of saw the be- behind the, the scenes, which was really, really cool to see like where their costumes, you know, where no, their okay. uniforms are. Yeah, so that was a really cool experience. And then um, just knowing every day I got to get up and go with, you know, a couple other artists, Disney artists, and go spend the whole day doing this. Um, well, it was really cool. We didn't stay in a hotel because normally they put you up at the park, but um, we opted to stay with um, another artist in a, quite a big house so that we can just cook and not have to worry about dining out. Yeah. And um, we got to know, his, his name is Luis Sotel and he's from Mexico and he's, he's not a Disney artist, but he's very famous for what he does. And it was so joyous to hang out with another artist. And we had, um, you know, got to go to the park every day and just get to know another artist from another country was, oh, it was so exciting. It was so nice because of being in solitude for 12 months, right? No kidding. Like it, I, it must have just boosted your soul and your creativity and all the things that you love about what you do, which have kind of been like, cramped on for the last year yeah. <laughs> well I was going to tell you so for, as part of it being a pinch me moment and dreams come true the very first book that when I was four years old mom said I grabbed my sister's cartoon how to draw cartoon books and I never did give it back I still have it and that's where I, I remember I remember being four and drawing from this book this how to draw book and it was a Disney artist who drew that book yeah so that was really cool and I have a whole collection that I have been collecting for 30 years of Disney art and um, art books and probably 300 books some of them are very old yeah and then when I was at the licensing show at one of them I don't really remember which one this man came up and he goes I love your art and I wasn't sculpting then. I was just painting. He said, I love your art. Wow, this is really great. And he says, I don't give this card out very often. And it was Michael Young of Collector's Edition of Disney Fine Art. No, yeah. it was not. It was. I still have a card. So I wasn't, he wasn't looking for a new fine artist painter because they had already signed enough. But he says, I love your work. Let's, you know stay in touch type of thing and he, he he I reminded him of this after we signed I said do you remember that you actually met me because we have not met in person we haven't talked we've only talked over the phone and we zoomed but we've asked of course we haven't met in person yet yeah and he goes no way and I said yeah 10 years ago I met you so it's I've had him well little sign my life oh, yeah my goodness Denise like this is just Oh, this is just so inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing this story today. I just love that this happened for you and that you are able to share your little Saskatchewan corner of the world with the rest of the world now. (laughs) Um, Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on though. (laughs) Love it. So before we leave, I have to ask every guest the same questions because I like to hear fun little details, like as if the details you haven't shared with us are fun enough today um, (laughs) about your world. So are you ready for our lightning round questions? Sure. Okay. Um, what book are you currently reading or, or I, audiobook? I am reading Dream It, Do It. It's about Marty Sklar. He was a, he worked with Disney for 50 years and his oh. book is very inspiring. Yeah. Love it. I'm about to reread the um, Creating Magic Disney marketing book. 
Oh yes. It's yeah, I so have good. <laughs> I've read it before, but it's like one of those ones that I like keep coming back to. Cause every time you read it, you like learn new things. <laughs> well, they're the masters of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your coffee order? Americana Miso with heavy cream at Starbucks. <laughs> Yum. Or, or at home it's with steamed Bailey's. <laughs> I'm coming to your place for coffee when this is all over. Yep. <laughs> um, if you could pick one song today that would feel like your current theme song for your life, what would it be? Um, don't worry, be happy right now. <laughs> just because I need not to worry about everything, right? That's Honestly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need that in more in my life too. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your favorite junk food? Jujubes. So good. <laughs> so good. Red one. <laughs> uh, when was the last time that you actually belly laughed? And what were you laughing about? Um, we had a belly laugh, really hard one where my stomach hurt so bad at um, the house we were renting it, not renting, but staying in at Disney World with Lewis about all of the stupid things people say to artists when you're at an art show. <laughs> <laughs> That and sounds, I can't go into all of them. <laughs> well, that sounds like a whole nother episode slash. It also sounds like a book that would be very well received in the artist community. Really funny. <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, which you were lucky enough to get away and getting yourself quarantined and back into the world again. Um, but where is going to be the first place you travel once we are allowed to leave our country? Maui. Uh, We've been there 12 times and it's my inspiration. And, and also I've met a couple of the artists, Disney artists are from Hawaii. So we're going to connect when you're there. Just need a little more Moana in your life. I do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. This was so fun. I, I just couldn't adore you more. Thanks for sharing your story, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. And soon we will hug. Yes, we sure will. This show would not be possible without you, my incredible listeners. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to Celebrating Simple Life on Apple Podcasts or download and listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. If you really want to make my day, leave a review. These reviews, ratings, and sharing screenshots of podcast episodes that were engaging for you on your Instagram stories and tagging friends that you think should hear the episode too really helps the podcast grow. It makes me so happy that I often select reviews to read on the show. And if yours is chosen, you will receive a special gift from me. Thank you for being a part of my mission to connect stories of business and life. Cheers to celebrating simple life.